Ah, the fresh smell of sawdust and wood has to be one of life's sweet fragrances. It hits me every time the door is open to my father's legendary wood shop. This student of lifelong learning has been going strong year after year, decade after decade. And his cluttered old shop is reminiscent of the endless hours invested in refining his celebrated art form. His wood shop is kind of a hallowed place for him. It's been built on knowledge and understanding about valued principles. Lifelong learning has changed him from a trivial retiree into a designer, a builder, a creator. When he transforms wood, it transforms himself a bit. I have found that when he is in his wood shop, it puts him at peace with the world. The premise of lifelong learning for my father is that it's grounded on the idea that learning is ongoing, it's personal, voluntary, and definitely self-motivated. As he occupies his ninth decade, I have come to the assumption through our conversations that ongoing education has the same criteria as working with and shaping wood. Some woodworkers just like to wing it, no plans. Just turn on the saw and let it rip. For my father, he's found it best to follow a plan. The military saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail is very true. His courses have taught him that without a plan, you'll encounter errors, wastes, and delays. Planning has always been essential to fulfilling his desired outcome. Mistakes, too, are always a good teacher, he claims, and rarely ruins the peace. Long ago, a shop teacher taught him to measure twice and cut once. Mistakes are only wasted if you fail to learn from them. My father frequently checks the measuring device on his table saw to make sure it is dead on accurate. Why? Because repeated cuts with an inaccurate measure will eventually yield a project that's way off. It's essential to have a standard by which to measure. He'd argue, too, that having standards is more than just a matter of building skills and knowledge within a narrow scope, but is increasingly important to be well-rounded, to have a sense of perspective, and to be able to leverage a variety of learning experiences into generating new ideas and ways of shaping things. Sometimes it's difficult to look back on our lives, trying to figure out all the mysteries and dilemmas. Lifelong learning gives us the benefit of real perspective and enables us to find true meaning in the hills and valleys of our past. And Shaping Wood has done exactly that for my father. If you were to pick up a piece of wood and focus every attention on each of its qualities, you might cut it, carve it, sand it, stain it, or even polish it. Then you would be smitten, captured by its lure, drawn into another world, you know, that ethereal world which holds woodworkers prisoners with a song so irresistible that none can hear it and escape. That's where my father lives. Let me give you a hint of discovery regarding my father. Wood is more than wood. A tree is more than a tree. The oddity of each type of wood in its different forms has more to tell you if you would but linger, dwaddle, and give it a chance to speak to you. Linger, enjoy, savor. Search within, for it will surely express the certainties of life. What does this all mean? I think it means that lifelong learning has empowered him to express his artistic vision. Wood is his chosen medium. Perhaps in a parallel universe, he's a painter or a poet, but in this one, he shapes wood. That's how he expresses himself. That's why he does it, to give physical form to his understanding of beauty. He might claim just to be a novice, but it does give him great satisfaction and reaffirms the fact that lifelong learning K to grave can expand our awareness, embrace self-fulfillment, and truly create an exciting multi-dimensional life. It doesn't get any better than that.